ran as an outsider. Yet you've been voting to start this war in Ukraine. You're voting to start a thermonuclear war with Russia and China. Why are you playing with the lives of American citizens? You're playing with our lives. There will be no neighbors if there's a nuclear bomb. You voted to mobilize and send money to Ukrainian Nazis. You're a coward. You're a progressive socialist. Where are you against the war mobilization? He's telling the right truth. You have done nothing. Tulsi Gabbard has shown guts where you've shown cowardice. I believed in you, and you became the very thing you sought to fight against. That's what you've become. You are the establishment, and you are the reason why everybody will end up in a nuclear war unless you choose to stand up right now and denounce the Democratic Party. Will you do that? Welcome to another episode of the J Lex Podcast. I am your host, J Lex. Please like, share, subscribe, comment. If you guys don't like what I'm saying, hate on me. I don't care. <laughs> excited. Hope everybody had a great weekend. I'm excited. Falls in full swing. Football season. First six weeks have been, uh, say the least, odd. The two New York teams are a combined nine and three. The the Giants are five and one. The Jets are four and two. I should say the the two New Jersey teams, the the three uh, tri-state area teams. The Buffalo Bills beat the the Kansas City Chiefs. So all three tri-state teams are are doing very well this year. The ones in New Jersey are a little surprising. It's been a surprising first six weeks. Uh, tomorrow, if I'm not mistaken, the NBA season starts, or it starts in the next day or so. Very very excited. I know we're in the full swing of a uh, playoff baseball game, so, uh, uh, yes, playoff uh, baseball games, yes, I think the Yankees play today, if I'm not mistaken, so it's a very exciting time, so a lot of fun, I love the love fall going into winter, it's the best time of the year, I know a lot of people are like, what about summer, nah, y'all can keep summer, you get that, get that, that, get those bugs, those bees, those wasps, get them all out of here, give me 12 degrees, Give me some boots, some Tims. Give me some long sleeves. You know what I'm saying? Give me all that. I, I'd much prefer that versus the 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 alternative, which is humidity, bugs, sweating for no reason. Now, you can hold that. But anyway, today's topic: no voting, no zucking, as the song goes. Uh, I believe it was Trina, and I don't remember the other artist's names. Uh, a Hispanic gentleman. Uh, give me one second. I want to get his name here. But uh, anyway, yes, that is the that is today's topic. No voting. No fucking, as they said. Uh, da, 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 let me see. What's his name? Uh, Saucy Santana. Ooh, Saucy Santana. Mm. But anyway, yes, we're in that time of the year, as y'all all know. I went to my P.O. box today. Went to go look up some mail. And there's more... Uh, uh, you know, you get those flyers. It's just like ten of them in my in my thing. You know, it's such a waste of paper. You know, all of the environmentalists. Like, can y'all? You know, I'm not really into all that, but can y'all please talk to them? You know, yeah, get me via text message. You get me an email. You get me. You get me. You waste a bunch of paper. All I'm gonna do is put them in in my uh my shredder, and it's every day. I don't check it every day, but every day I go in there, there's just endless paper of the same nonsense over and over and over and over. Please. It's enough already. I know we got a couple weeks left to the election. I know it's all in high gear, but, you know, every day I'm getting something. I don't even live in Florida. I'm getting stuff about registering in Florida. <sighs> Please, for the love of Jesus, I'm waiting for all this to come to an end. But why did I... Uh, uh, why did I uh, give that topic for today? Obviously, we know that Trina and this guy, Saucy Santana, they have a song on... That they put out there uh, for getting black people to vote. And of course, they say if you don't go and vote, essentially, in the song, they, you know, you can go and listen to the song. I can't play it here for copyright reasons. But basically, if you're not going to vote, you're not getting any, is essentially the, the theme here. Uh, I know I'm a little late with it. I've been a little busy. I wanted to do something sooner. But nevertheless, I, I mean, first off, can we stop with this? Mm-hmm. 
you know, mm-hmm. stop and stop, uh, uh, you know, challenging people's intelligence as it pertains to, you know, basically withholding sex, essentially, if they don't go out and vote. And who are they going to vote for? Who are they supposed to vote for? What if they vote Republican, huh? What if they vote on the on the side you don't want? Does that still does that still apply? It's rhetorical. We already know the answer to this. You know, let's 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 talk about the issues, not sex. Not I'm gonna withhold sex. And when that person goes out, on, you know, and and has sex with somebody else, you're gonna be upset. I mean, the stupidity here. But nevertheless, we're in the full swing of the election season. And I'm going to ask this question, and it's going to piss some people off. I don't really care if it pisses you off. But I'm going to ask this question nevertheless. When do people, not just black people, but when do people stop with the legacy votes? I've talked about it multiple times on this podcast. Your vote is a business transaction. When do we stop with the legacy votes? When do we stop with the black equals Democrat? When do we stop with the, well, my family voted Republican, so I have to vote Republican? No, you don't. We all know how this goes. We all know this is about business. I read, uh, I was reading some comments before about a, uh, I forget, I think it was the actual uh, video of the no no voting, no zuck, no, you know, zucking thing. Um, oh, excuse me, vucking, vucking, excuse me, not, not zucking, vucking, vucking. Um, where this guy said he was a preacher and he basically had to leave the church because what happens? Election season comes, all these politicians come in, you know, they're not there to, to preach the word of the Lord. They're there to, to, you know, cap for votes. They're there to get you out to vote against your better interest. Please tell me, and I'm going to ask this question too, please tell me. I'm going to talk to black people right now. What you have gotten, you know, in fact, I take that back. I'm going to talk to anybody who lives in like a rural area where it's a legacy vote. Whether you live in rural America, whether you live in urban America. If you and your family have religiously voted for a particular party, more times than not, uh, uh, in rural areas, it, they usually vote a Republican. In a lot of urban, uh, urban areas, in my experience, they vote Democrat. Can you please tell me? In these areas where you are impoverished, where you have had generations of poverty, you have lived check to check, there's been no real progress, what you have gotten for your vote? I wish I had the Jeopardy music right now, the, you know, like the final question, Jeopardy. I'd like to know what you've gotten. I, I already know the answer. We both, most of us know the answer. It's nothing. You've gotten little to nothing for your vote. You go out there, you wait in long lines. You vote for the particular party that you're, you're uh, vying for. And you get nothing in return. All those people who go to church. And more times than not, it's the Democrats. Sometimes it's the Republicans. They go there. They give the pastor something. All right. That's why Creflo Dollar and the rest of those guys are, you know, getting Learjets, G7s or whatever is it, whatever's out there. And you get nothing. You barely get scraps. You don't even get the, the, the crumbs from the bread that they eat. But they're riding around in Benzes, expensive Armani suits, jewelry like the like the the pastor out in uh, uh, Brooklyn who got robbed a while back. What are you getting for your vote? Are you getting intercourse from your partner? Are they going to hold out? If that's the case, go find somebody else to deal with. That's real. That's real. I know a lot of y'all are going to be pissed off at that. I don't really care. Your vote is a business transaction, not an emotional reaction. You have to look at history. You have to look at what's in front of you. You don't look at what you think might happen. You look at what actually happened. I'll give you a perfect example. There's a bunch of y'all in the black community. I'm talking to y'all specifically. Who, have, who hold uh, 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 Barack Obama in high regards. I would love to know what he did for y'all as the president, other 
being other than being the first half black president. What has uh, uh, Alexandria or Ocasio Cortez done for you as a, as for the people that she supports her constituency in the Bronx? What has she done for you? I just saw something where Martin Lawrence and Michelle Obama are doing a campaign for HBCU students to go out and vote. Who do you think they want? Who do you think they, they uh, are, are getting them out to, to vote for? Hmm? Tell me what they have done for people who look like you. And I, I'm going to who, who've done things for people who look like you. You don't vote collectively. You vote individually. Now, if your your uh, beliefs coincide with one another, then you go and you vote together. But you don't vote collectively. What has voting collectively gotten black people? I don't want to hear about the Voting Rights Act. I don't want to hear about the Civil Rights Act. Most of the people who are, who are going to be listening to this were not even born then. I'm talking about now. Tell me what you've gotten. Tell me what you got under Barack Obama. I just found, I, I knew this kind of already, but it was confirmed for me. I heard a conversation some uh, Jewish guys were having. Under Barack Obama, Holocaust survivors get a check monthly from the government. Holocaust survivors. Did the Holocaust happen in New York City that I've been missing? Or, or in Miami? Or wherever else there was? I thought the Holocaust happened out in Germany under Hitler. So why is it that your tax dollars are going to a group who's, who's uh, the, the, the mass murdering didn't even happen here? Under a black president, no less. Aren't y'all out here uh, uh, screaming for reparations? Have you gotten it yet? Or was the stimmy good enough for you? You see what's going on out here right now? Oh, remember everybody got their stimmy checks? The, the 1% of the 1% got $5 trillion. Now there's massive inflation. Everything went up. Housing is the, the, the housing bubble is about to burst again. And we were all around when, the, when it burst the first time. They did nothing to fix it. And now you have a slew of things that are going to happen simultaneously. I ask, this, I ask another question. I know some of the environmentalists are going to get after me. If we can produce our own oil, why are we going to Saudi Arabia for it? Don't you find it a little odd? People continuously and repeatedly go out and vote against their own interests based upon something that their parents did or the community that they're in. You know, we've talked about it in the past. Donald Trump didn't win in 2016 by accident. People finally understood it. I'm not saying that Donald Trump was a good candidate. I'm not saying he was a good president. I'm simply saying people, in particular people of color, are starting to understand that you cannot go and vote against your own interests. If you run a business, you are in a different category than somebody who's an employee. In particular, if you're on a small business, you've seen how small businesses got ravaged during the lockdowns. Amazon didn't lose uh, uh, money. In fact, they went up. Their worth went up during uh, lockdown. But that small mom and pop shop that y'all look that was uh, uh, y'all knew in the neighborhood that closed down, that happened. It's kind of like it's uh, uh, it's kind of like when Walmart goes into like rural communities. If you watch there, I think the, I forget the name of the. A documentary. There's a Walmart documentary. Came out many years ago, where Walmart would go into like these rural communities. When I went to college in upstate New York, it was the same thing. You know, they would have like these small, small mom and pop shops. Walmart comes in, undercuts the prices, and all of a sudden, all those small uh, mom and pop shops have no choice but to close down. And then they need to work, so they go and they work for Walmart. It's no different here. When the lockdowns happened, uh, uh, small communities, or, or I should say small mom and pop shops, mostly restaurants, it seemed like. I think the last numbers I heard was like 170,000 small businesses closed. Microsoft went up in value. 
Amazon went up in value. But that local spot will be closed and it will be closed forever. Those people are not going to get their money back. You have to vote for what's best for you, not the collective. I don't care if you're black, white, Asian, whatever the case might be. Do what's best for you in your situation. And if the person you're dealing with wants to hold out because you don't want to go out and vote, you know what? Kick them to the curb. I know a bunch of people, they're going to sit there and they're going to go to the polls and they're going to vote against their best interests. Because as a collective, we have to vote to keep the same people in who do nothing to improve not just their situation, but everybody's situation. If you're not in their little club, you don't mean anything. Oh, they'll come to your church. They'll, they'll do their town hall meetings where they get questions, uh, uh, where they get uh, questions that they already know the answers to. And they'll continue to look good. And by the way, and I had a conversation with a gentleman, had lunch with him, hadn't seen him in a while. Yesterday. We had a conversation about this, but we had an adult conversation. There was no emotions. As I've mentioned to you before, and he knows this, he was a, he worked in oil for many years. That's why I brought up the whole oil thing before. All this not, all this craziness, and he understood. It's not about emotions, it's about economics. It's about the dollar. It's Excel spreadsheets. I, I say this to you a thousand times. Those people who are not just rich but wealthy understand that. Some, in most cases, you wouldn't even know that they're wealthy. They're not going out there going crazy, spending all kinds of money on, on trinkets and things along those lines, things that might get them robbed or killed. More times than not, they literally look like they could be somebody who, who lives on the street. They look most of the time like they're homeless. You wouldn't even know it. Now, I happen to be around them enough, and I can be like, okay, yep. Yep, definitely. He's dressing down for sure. Because they don't care about that. They don't. They're the people who get dressed up in and, and $500 suits and go to, uh, um, you know, fundraising events, quote unquote. Put their 10K in and they have influence. So as I was going to mention before, the average person in the United States makes about $50,000 a year. The average congressperson makes about a buck 40. That's not counting insurance. That's not counting security or anything along those lines. Things that you pay for. But you will go and vote for people who don't give a damn about you. And listen to uh, uh, various celebrities who themselves are just business people. I can only imagine what Trina and Saucy Santana got paid to do that stupid ass video. Production, the whole bit. They're in there. I think Trina, if memory serves me correctly, I don't know too much about Saucy Santana. But if I'm not mistaken, Trina's like a, a real estate mogul in the Miami area. You think for two seconds she's not going out there or, or she doesn't have representatives going out there dropping the change and being like, look, I need you to take care of this, 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 this. That's how it works. Need people to go out there and vote for what? I don't get anything. I mean, you can go out and vote. But I'm going to say it again. You don't have to. People say, well, people fought, for, you know, a long time. People fought for the, the right to. Yes, because they didn't have the option to at all. But if I'm not getting something for my vote, why am I going to waste my time? You can go vote left, you can go vote right, you can vote uh, uh, independent or protest, or you can just not show up. And yes, you can complain because you're still paying taxes. You're still paying Uncle Sam whether you vote or not. So you always have to think about it from that standpoint. And particularly when you're talking about local or state. I live in New York. There's a good chance that Holcomb, who's been one of the worst governors in the history of the state, is probably going to repeat. I mean, she got in because, you know, almost makes you miss Cuomo. And he was terrible.
they're not doing anything for 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 uh, uh, the regular people. In fact, I, I brought up Holcomb. Give me one second here. I think I still have the article somewhere. Give me one second. Da, 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 da. This was based back in September. I meant to talk about it. I've got it here. Out of the New York Post, Governor Holcomb, no bid COVID testing contract is sick and wrong. Let me see. Reporting from Albany reveals that Governor Holcomb gave favorite insiders a family that donated $100,000 to her campaign, a sweetheart deal amounting into $637 million. The to Bell family, which owns which owns Digital Gadgets, a New Jersey-based fulfillment center and distributor of tech products, got a no-bid deal to provide New York State with 52 million at-home COVID tests for $13 a piece. Double what they were charging. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and that woman is probably going to still be the governor come November 8th. The deal was signed the very same day that Digital Gadgets made the overpriced offer, which Holcomb defends on the grounds that the firm was able to deliver critically important tests during, a over, during the overhyped Omicron wave. She insists that the cozy relationship between her campaign and the firm's owners was not a factor, and she was unaware of it at all. Do you believe that for a solitary second? Are you kidding me? Why is this information out here and y'all either are not reading it or you're playing stupid or you're just stupid? It's it's one of the three. And what you're thinking, well, you got to vote Republican? No, you don't have to show up. Almost $650 million for some BS COVID tests. I keep repeating myself, but please understand, this is not about emotions. This is business. Most of you are, are worried about one of three things or, or in a combination, style, status, uh, I'm sorry, style, uh, uh, status, and, and uh, oh, what's the third one? Style, status, no substance. Well, I'm blanking on it right now. Style, status, and where is it? Why am I blanking right now? I don't know why I'm blanking. Anyway, you guys know what I'm talking about. Every time I want to say it, I, I blank on it for some odd reason. But you know exactly what I'm talking about. Those three S's that I talk about, that I constantly talk about. That you seem not to listen to, even though you know what I'm saying is true. The three S's. It's every single time. And you guys make it seem as if I'm either crazy. Thank you. Style, status, symbolism. Sorry that it took so long. Symbolism. That seems to be the only three things that y'all are worried about. No substance. It's like quantity over quality. And then y'all get mad when somebody like me comes on and tells you what the truth is. That's why you wear Gucci and Louis Vuitton, 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 excuse me, Prada, whoever that is. Stop making other people rich. Stop making yourself rich. Stop worrying yourself with the things that you, you can't control, but take care of the things that you can. Vote for your interests. Not mine, not anybody else's, but yours. And if you can do it collectively, cool. You think you're getting reparations and you're voting for the same people who keep stopping you from getting those reparations? Come on. You think they're going to change your community? When you keep voting for the same people who have no interest in changing your community, the only time they do anything for you is when it's election season. They should be doing stuff for you every single day. And if they don't, then you don't support them. I don't know how many other ways I can say this. Thank you for tuning in to another episode of the JLEX Podcast. Please like, share, subscribe, and comment on the content. Take care. <laughs> Check, check, I think we got
season, bruh. Now voting.